So, um, can we fit the correlations, these super correlations, into the Duffelman's hypothesis? Well, Alice has one of these particles. Bob has his partner. They've got one of these pairs. So let's ask a question. Suppose that Alice's particle has a definite A0 value of plus 1. If definiteness is true, it's got either the plus 1 or minus 1 value. So suppose it's plus 1. Well then, that means Bob's B0 value, or in the 0, 0 case, it's going to be plus 1. But it also means that his B1 value has to be plus 1. If you just go back to that earlier slide, it'd be a little easier to see. Unfortunately, I can't show them both at once. But then, uh, since Bob has a plus 1 for his B1, um, actually, uh, sorry, I, that's not what I meant to say, because Bob has a plus one for his B0. Then our third principle about the A1 B0 case says Alice has a plus one for A1. Now you get the kicker. A1 would equal B1. Rule four from the previous slide said that can't happen. We just figured out that in the case we were looking at, Bob would have to have plus one for B0 that means Alice would have to have plus one for A1. And now we've got a problem. Because rule four says you can't have agreement in the A1, B1 case. Now, I'm just going to say this. We're not going to struggle with it. But the other choice is, well, you know, that didn't work out. If we say that Alice has a definite plus one for her A0, that didn't work, so what if Alice has a definite minus one for her A0? It's one or the other. Will that work? Well, the same kind of argument shows that it won't. The problem is this. In this imaginary case, when they're both measuring their zero case, A0, B0, the results agree. When Alice is doing zero and Bob is measuring one, the results agree. When Alice is doing one and Bob is doing zero, the results agree, and that forces, just by the logic of the definite hypothesis, that in the A1, B1 case, the results would have to agree. agree. But we're imagining these super correlations where they don't agree. You suddenly think, well, why are you imagining that? That seems like a crazy thing to imagine. Well, the reason we're imagining that is because quantum mechanics isn't quite this weird. But quantum mechanics is almost this weird. And that's where all of the uh, fun starts. What we just saw is that if any pair fits our rules one through three, it can't fit rule four. And that means that if there really were super correlated pairs, the definiteness hypothesis that comes from EPR would have to be false. It would lead to a contradiction. It would be impossible. So, quantum theory doesn't predict super correlations, but it predicts something close. What we can show is that you get correlations in quantum mechanics that aren't 100% for a case like this, but they can be as high as about 80%. That 80% of the time, if they're both doing the A, if they do the A0, B0 case, they get the same result. 80% of the time, if it's A0, B1, they get the same result, and so on. And then a little bit of arithmetic that I'm not going to go through shows you that the probabilities would end up adding up to more than 100%. So we would get a contradiction once again, even though we have to do it together. So what's the point so far? What I've said here is that the EPR argument seems really reasonable. It says, what I do here doesn't affect what goes on over there. And then it uses a common sense principle to come up with this definite hypothesis. The position and the momentum are both definite over there. The spin is definite in direction d, and it's also definite in direction d prime. That's what the EPR reading leads to. And what Bell recognized is that that actually leads to empirical predictions 
You can ask what quantum mechanics predicts for these statistics. And what quantum mechanics predicts will not fit the definiteness hypothesis. The definiteness hypothesis is empirically wrong. Okay? That's the point. Now, um, here's a little interim summary, then, just to say what I said again. EPR knows these funny correlations, and they give an argument that leads to the definiteness hypothesis. It would make sense for these correlations. The definiteness hypothesis is inconsistent with the super correlations we talked about. Quantum mechanics doesn't give those. And by a little extra argument that I didn't go through, it's also inconsistent with close to super correlations, and quantum mechanics does predict those. So, quantum mechanics doesn't fit with the definiteness hypothesis. But now we've got a puzzle. Yes, sir? Is it a, is it a reasonable reformulation to say that the definiteness is the assumption that the, um, that the measurement on one thing does not affect the measurement on the other? Yes. In that, other words, yeah, right. only, only the, the combination of the two measurements at once yeah. is a single entity. Is that uh, right? That's, that's yeah. a way of putting it that many people would be happy with. Certainly the idea that the measurement here doesn't affect things over there is definitely right. right. Um, so, the moral is that if quantum mechanics is right, then either the definiteness hypothesis is wrong, that's one possibility, or in any case, uh, another possibility that some people would, would, would have thrown in the mix here is this. Is, well, maybe there really are signals going faster than light years. Maybe that's the explanation for these, um, for these correlations. And that's a hypothesis that you shouldn't just dismiss. There are theories around that actually take that seriously. But in either case, Einstein was wrong. Because Einstein re rejected the action of the distance view and he gave an argument that led to the definiteness hypothesis. So either way, Einstein's view is wrong. This is not to uh, disrespect Einstein. This is just to say that even uh, someone as brilliant as Einstein might be puzzled by some of the subtleties of modern theory. It was a long time before people figured out how to get at what was going on in this argument. There's a slick way to see this that's kind of fun, and um, I'll just describe it briefly. Uh, EPR talked about pairs of systems. You can do a slick little thing with three systems, and you don't need to have any probabilities. Um, it's named after uh, three physicists, Girardi, Horn, and Zeilinger, and it's called the GHZ state, but that's just background. Here's what happens. We've got Alice, Bob, and Carol. Carol is usually the third person in the scenario. We need an extra one. Um, and um, so we've got these electrons, we can measure their spins, and we're going to consider two perpendicular directions, x and y. So Alice can measure x and measure y, Bob can measure spin x or spin y, likewise Carol. And the state predicts some three-way correlations. Here's how it works. Suppose that one of them, doesn't matter which, is measuring x spin, maybe it's Alice, and the other two, say Bob and Carol, are measuring y spin. Suppose that's what's happening. For this special quantum state, here's what quantum mechanics says. The product of the three results will always be plus one. So they might all get plus one. Alice might get plus one, and the other two might get minus one, or the other cases. But quantum theory says the product will always be plus one. But that has to be true anyway. I mean, no, it doesn't have to be true. Anyway. Three, but three, but, three, but three. coming home that question, it doesn't actually have to be true, because one possibility could be that one of them could get a minus, and the other two could get plus. Okay? Um, in other words, <clears throat> we're going to get one spin-up result, exactly one spin-up result, or exactly three spin-up results, as opposed to two spin-up results or no spin-up results. Okay? That's what's going to happen. That's what quantum mechanics predicts. And, you know, a silly little animation. Here would be a case where the green means they're all off. Here would be another case um, where we've got one green and two reds. That's the kind of thing that's going to happen. And it's either three greens or a green and two reds. That's what quantum mechanics predicts when you've got x spin here, y spin there, and y spin there all being measured once. 